And we are back now with kickoff. We had a couple of technical difficulties, but we have fixed them. And here's the kickoff. Deep kick. And there's and a the fumble botched catch there. Oh my god, Albany cannot. No. This is probably going to be their fourth kickoff. Um, honestly, the fourth or fifth time on the kickoff return that they have not been able to hold on or even catch the ball. I mean, it's kind of hard to, you know, like, catch the ball, especially, you know, if they're winning, you know, like, how fast it's going, and, like, everyone just charging at you, and you're, like, just, mm -hmm. just one person, and people are coming after you, like, yeah. five or ten people. All of a sudden, it's like the ball is covered in butter or yeah. whatever. I think Slick. what all they need to do is just, like, kind of, like, take, like, a breath and just relax and, you know, not try to, like, gun it. Like, just take your time and, like, just start slow. And, you know, work your way up. Here we go as Mency hands it off to Banoff up to middle to Joseph. Got a couple yards gained there. Yeah, I agree with you. Honest, I mean, but, you know, you coached, I mean, honestly, at that point, I'm sure you probably, you coach enough discipline, you practice that enough where it's yeah. like, you know, it's like when a kicker practices, when really, like, you were a kicker, all you do is kick field goals. And you miss a field goal, and you're like, all right, like, what have you been doing for, like, the last hour and a half? Yeah. So, here we go. Mency. And shotgun. Beautiful run. Ends it off here. Gain for another couple of yards. It'll be third down, and probably, I'd honestly say probably about third and... About four or five. <clears throat> big reason why, the, to go back on what I've said before, big reason why Albany has had such, you know, defensive problem is they've haven't, you know, they've, like their act lack of experience, they've had to start six underclassmen, you know, on this team and, it's really it hasn't been as much of a problem, but just the lack of experience and the right. lack of really of just size that comes with being an underclassman. But you know, here we go. Mency and shotgun rolls out to the right. Here's Beautiful the pass, caught there by Caleb John, number twelve. It'll be looks like it'll be about short for the first down. But like back what I was saying, you know, some of these players include, you know, linebacker number thirty-four Savion Blunt, who. The team, you know, has a nickname for him, LeBron, because he's he's only he's a freshman. You know, you have guys like Savian Blunt, like I've said, he's a freshman. You know, a linebacker, Clifton Mans, who's a tenth grader, who played freshman football just last season and skipped right up through JV. And then the likes of number sixty six, Jihad Ali, or aka they call Bama, because he had moved from Alabama as Mincy. This is up at the snap there and gets hit hard there on a first down run. But anyway, you know, you have really those three headlined underclassmen, you know, two of them are tenth graders and the other one's a freshman. And you know? that's you know, you a freshman on varsity, you know, that's not really you don't really hear about that or see that. And that's just pretty cool. You know, you're a freshman and you're, you know, playing varsity. Yeah. Especially if your nickname is LeBron, that kinda comes with high praise. Yeah. We are now at second down and second down and eight. Mency, company with two running backs in the backfield. Wide receivers out to the opposite sides. Mency throws it deep. Just wow, just just over the outreached arms of K. Quase Dickens as another mi another missed opportunity for Albany. Missing a wide open wide receiver as Diggins came out of the backfield there, actually. Looks like he ran a wheel route, going just literally just running up the sideline, was not accounted for by the defense. And what it just, that's what, that's gotta be what there's, that's the second time. Gilliland's defense has done good tonight, but you know, other than these, a couple of these hiccups, but they've had a couple of good breaks with, you know, Mency not being able, you know, not being able, but Mency being a little bit accurate, inaccurate on those throws as right. a couple of times. Some Albany players have been, you know, pretty wide open as Mency throws, or Mency steps back. Throws it deep again, and it is a little bit overthrown now, see, over everyone. If 
if I was Albany, I wouldn't go for a pass. I'd just run it, you know, because that's two passes in a row that they've just missed. You know, not, you know, make fun of Albany or anything. It's just, you know, like, go for a run, change it up, you know, so you get them confused, kind of. You know, like, change it up, you know, go for a run, get a few yards in, then maybe, just maybe, go for a pass. Well, I think eventually, I mean, you can't, I mean, you can't run it every down, but... No. I think... They just, I think it's just a matter, they have good, I wouldn't even say good execute, they just got to execute better. I think that yeah. that's Albany's problem right now is just a lack of execution on those plays. Honestly, they've, I mean, two potential touchdowns missed literally by a couple of inches on the fingertips. And instead of what could have been even just a first down now, where Albany is forced to punt. And a little bit of a high snap there as the punter not even able to punt it as he tries to round the edge. He's going for it. He's got a little bit of a – he's got some room, and he actually might have – I don't think that's his first down. He might have made it. And based on the spot, that might be a first down. Yep. And that is a first, first down. down. What an incredible play there by the punter there. I believe it was that number 56, Andre Torres. Wow, what a – he takes an errant snap and runs just right towards the corner and probably ends up running, what, about 20, 25 yards and is able to get just enough, just enough for the first down. I think Albany finally, you know, had their wake-up call. And like, all right, you know, we got our first down. You know, let's go for it. You know, let's not stop here. Let's keep going. And what turned into a pretty long, uh, what could turned into what could have been good field, uh, field position for Gilderland, now has turned into field good field position for Albany, thanks to that play. Wow, that was just that was the best play, best play I've seen from Albany tonight. Yeah. Second sucks right now. As he actually, I mean, keeps his hope, keeps Albany's hopes alive in this game as. It is now, with you know, four and a half minutes left in the third quarter. You know, really, honestly, Albany really needs to score here. To stay in this game. If they, they score, one, like I say, if they score once, then I think that's when they're gonna like be more there. We scored once. That's the end of the third quarter, and you know, now we have a timeout on the field. Albany will take be taking the timeout. Either second of the game, it would be second of the half, actually. But yeah, I agree with you there. I agree with you that they've had some missed opportunities, and I think with those opportunities, I mean, scoring here would be a really big help in them trying to come back. You know, they've been able to hold Gilliland's offense so far. Right. Only allowing them to a field goal so far in this quarter. Really, they've been holding on to the ball a long time. Yeah. They've been taking up a lot of time with possession. I think this right now would be probably make or break for Albany's offense right now. Just this would be their last chance to – Get an opportunity to score. As both teams come back onto the field. Now this is just like, it's a, that's a good game, you know. Go to run, you know, with the awesome defense. Yeah, I get you. Coming into the game, actually. New kid coming in um, at corner is number two, Chris Ardito. As Dickens rolls to the running back and has actually got the ball handed off to him. As he runs Ooh. around a couple of defenders. And the ball is out, actually. And that is a first down for the Dutchman. Fumble recovered there, I believe, by number 22, Nick Papalizio. Nice play there by Nick Pop. I don't think anyone realized that he actually got the ball. No, I thought it was Alden who had the ball. As we look here, Dickens rolls around. Nice run there by a little bit, but ball is bounced right there. out there. And just bounces right into the hands of Nick Papalizio. Nice job by him. A little bit of stroke of luck, but yet another. That is Albany's fourth turnover of the night. And sets the Gilderland Dutchman up at their own 43-yard line. Yeah, it's, I mean, that was a great play right there. I didn't even, like, it was pretty cool how, like, I didn't even see, like, you didn't even notice that you wouldn't have the ball until they s told you. And it's We've just... And then we have more chance here if we want Raekwon as the ball is handed off to Brendan Hoffman off to the side. Gets around the corner and is taken down. Wow, what a 
vicious hit there by Albany. That might that's gonna be a, that has to be a penalty right there. Might add another 15 yards to that. As might be a poor horse collar or a late hit, as we will see in a minute. Nice end around there. Nice design play for Hoff. Uh, excuse me for Hoffman. As he tries to get around, but yeah, that is that's gonna be a horse collar. That's definitely gonna be a horse collar for. Side for the Dutchman. And as we are now with stop time, we're under four minutes left. That will be a 15 yard yarder. penalty. So now we're even more closer to scoring uh, once again. We are now set up. The Dutchman will be now set up at the. Looks we're like the 40. We're going to say the 30. Five yard, 30, 36 yard line. Yeah, let's go with that. Albany's 36 yard line, yes. Is handed off to a motioning the Gwicky as there's a late falling for some of the couple of the players. About a two yard gain there. It'll be second and eight. <coughs> Joe Park comes out of the game. Coming in for him will be number 25 backup running back Mikey Britton his first appearance at running back in this game. Has Art Scott even been in the game at all yet? That's one player that I'm look looking to see is Maybe Art. He's not. As Mason Lido throws it deep for Brendan Hoffman. Ah. Tipped up in the air and tipped away by number eight, Nazir Joseph. Great play by him as Hoffman was diving backwards for it, but ball never even got to his hands as Joseph was able to get in front of it. As... Kitterland really, you know. Good defense. I think if they've gotten the one thing that they've not been able to, I wouldn't even say execute so far, but the one thing, Kitterland is a team that likes to run the ball a lot, but yeah. the one thing that they all, it's they like to run the ball, but they're looking for that big play. And so far in this game, they've not, they've had a couple of big plays, but that big pass play, they've definitely looked downfield for Brendan Hoffman right. and for Jared Schwartz, but just haven't been able to connect on any of those passes as Lido steps back. Immediate pressure here as it is, ah. It looked like there was gonna be another screen pass, but Albany immediately picks it up and the intended receiver, number 25 running back, new addition to the game, Michael Breton, you know, immediately taken down. Now, if you were Albany and you were down by this much and it was still like around this time of the game, like third quarter, end of the third quarter, what would you do? No, I mean, no, it's still the third quarter. You, you never know what's going to happen in the football game. I'd say you keep fighting and try not to let them score. And right. Try to get more victory as Mason, you know, rolls out to the left side. Interception. And that is an interception Ooh. there by Caleb John as that ball was thrown short, intended for Braddy Gwicky. Or, excuse me. Yes, Bradley Gwicky. Er, yeah, 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 Brad Gwicky. Right there, as he tries, he throws on the run, tries to throw it deep for Bredigwicki, who actually was open. He actually was, he probably had a couple steps ahead of John, but you know, with the short throw, John was able to get a head start on that pass. And that is the one's first interception throwing in the um, whole game. This is for their first turnover. Albany, a little bit of a moral victory there as they try to get back on the field and score before the end of this quarter, uh, quarter ends to. Build a chunk into lead as they're down about four touchdowns, about four scores. As Mincy snaps it, throws it out to the side. Caught there by backup quarterback Anthony Coppola Bishop, who has got a couple of passes here. He's really been featured a lot in this offense, even as a he's not listed as a wide receiver, but he's it's about he's had about three or four catches so far in this game. Been a little bit of a go-to piece for Mincy. As Albany sets up. Three men out wide. Mincy snaps it. Fakes handoff. Stumbles a little bit there. And is eventually taken down there by Mikey Breton. Great play by him. Good Im defense. Immediately gets to the quarterback. And who I, th I tried to run. It looked like he tried to run it there, right? Yeah. yeah. 
It looked like he was going to run it, and, like, he just stumbled a little bit, and, like, the defense was just right on him. Nice turn there by Steven Mincy. Speaking of Mincy, you know, in his last game, he completed 14 of 18 passes for 172 yards, two DDs, an interception against Saratoga. You know, Coven, one playmaker there. Another playmaker that they've had in their backfield, their best running back would be Kikwase Dickens, as he's had a very key, he's been a very key, important player in this team. As the ball is, f there's a botched snap there. There's a pile on the ground. And that. And Albany will retain the ball. They will keep it. Speaking back on um, Dickens, so far in this year, you know, he's been pretty important. He's had 178 rushing yards, 172 receiving yards. He's been very important. You know, that just characterizes his speed. He's a very fast player. You know, Albany likes to use him, whether it's on an end around, trying to get him around, trying to get him whatever motion they can, similar to what they do with Brendan Hoffman. Right. Or Gillen does with Brendan Hoffman. Or with Brady Gwicky or um, Jason Gwicky, or not more, more Brady Gwicky, or even Jerry Schwartz. You know, just trying to get him whenever they can. Just get him, you know, the ball and try and get as many yards as he can. And that's a, he's a big part of that offense for this team this year. Including that, you know, you have him, and then you have the likes of you know number eight Nazir Joseph, who's made a couple. He's made a couple of good plays at corner. Hasn't really done, done much in the passing game so far, though. As how many punts here, and the ball is. Out of bounds, it looks like. Over the head, snapped over the head of and Andre Torres. Bad snap there as. That will result in a safety. That is the first safety I've seen this year, actually, in high school football. As I've never seen a safety ever in high school. I've seen it in football and NFL, but just never in high school. That's just a bad snap there. I mean. Unfortunately, even to score out though. So if yeah. anyone has anyone now here has OCD, you know, that kind of helps you out a little bit. But um, <coughs> I've, I'm a little bit of OCD, but that kind of that makes that's more pleasant. But um, anyway, as now not only does Gitterling get the two points, but they'll now get a punt, and they'll be able probably get the ball in good field position here and get a chance to go up, at least thirty, you know, thirty points here. This is an awesome game right here. You know, Gitterling. 28 nothing end of the third quarter. Their running game has been the best. Their defense in the running game is just spot on. Really just honestly the highlight Albany's night I'd say that's you could honestly say that might be that really might just be what's you know that's just been their night right there. That yeah. just keys up their whole night. Just miscued plays, you know, missed opportunities for scores, just Penalties, small mess, small mess ups, just all you know, all the adding up, and this game, you know, instead of white boss, and it's not like it's really just been a couple of big plays that they've missed that you know, had things gone differently, they'd probably be a lot closer in this game, and psyche would be different, but you know, it's twenty-eight nothing, and here we are as they will punt. I'm sure most of you at home. Be we'll, we'll, we're pretty excited to see how this happens. You know, this is the first time this has happened. I think this year for Gillerland, we've never seen a safety punt. But here we go. Kick is up in the air. And it is dropped by Jason. Uh, Jason. Oh, excuse me, Bradley quickly as he runs out to the side. He's got a little bit of room here. Can you go all the way. He will not, as he's taken out at the 39-yard line. Nice run back, though. It is, especially you know he almost dropped the ball and he. He received, he got it back and just ran. It's pretty good. So we're here with 48 seconds left in the third quarter. It's starting to get a little chilly out. It's been a little bit chilly out. Yeah. Yeah, it's been, you know, sun's down. Getting later on the night, you know, you get that little cool breeze. As we see there, as Brad kind of just took a bad, didn't really pick the ball up. We want to in the air, but you know, still is able to get it up, pick it up, and get around the edge of the defense of the special teams. As Lido snaps it, rolls out to the left, keeps looking. Pass incomplete. There's a penalty there. It looked like it was intended for Brendan Hoffman, but slightly overthrown. 
penalty marker on the field, though. As you see there, they go just, just a little bit overhead. Looked like it might have gone, might be going to number 23, uh, Kyle Glenn. Lethal's done a pretty good job tonight, honestly, as a quarterback. They have. I believe, you know, a couple, couple big plays as we wait here. Well, I was talking about earlier to one of my friends is the biggest play that we've made. It was um, Brandon Hoffman with the touchdown, like the first touchdown of the game, first mm -hmm. play. And that was, I think that was the play of the night. I agree. As, ooh, tipped catch there right in the hands of Brendan Hoffman, almost – you know, right out of the hands of Nate Collins, who fell to the ground trying to die for it, but it is our right as... You know, people make mistakes. Yeah. A little bit of miscommunication there on the offensive line between Lido and the uh, and uh, Coach Penna. Mm. But I figured it out, and uh, I believe now it will be actually, depending on the market, it looks like it's going to be a second and 14 as Lido sets up. Motions, rolls out toward the left, gets Be out to Hoffman. Hoffman's got a little bit of room. Beautiful pass. Breaks, Ooh. A, breaks a couple of tackles and gets out a little bit. Plenty enough plenty enough uh, yards for the first down. I believe that's another 20-yard gain for him. He's got to have at least 100 all-purpose yards. Mm. He's really on He's just been on his game tonight. The whole team has to good on, you know. Brent Huffman, of course, you know, takes the cake for most of it, you know, with the touchdown and the pass and everything. As uh, Kyle Glenn motions, gets a couple, gets a little bit of room here. Tries to juke out another offender. A couple yards he made. As we, as the second tick on the third quarter. And we here, there's actually a flag on a play here as... Time has stopped with four seconds to go. As junior Kyle Glenn looks to be a big part of uh, next year's team. As let's try and figure out what's going on here. It'll actually that'll be that'll be a ten yard penalty. That'll be a big penalty on the Dutchman as Oof. it goes from a first and ten to a first and twenty. They'll run out the clock and now be the end of the third quarter. It is GHS 28, Albany Falcons 0. I think um, first and 20 for Judah 1, I think that's as far as we have never been that far back for us. I think that's the farthest as we've been in this game. So far, you know, as we head into the fourth quarter, I think we'll really, now I think what the biggest storyline is now has become where and when are we going to see Raekwon Brady? That's what the crowd is cheering right now. And if I was a coach, I'd have put I'd put him now or at the, towards the end of the fourth quarter. Last few minutes, let him get you know like the last few minutes of him being in the game. I think they'll put him in. I think they'll put him in those running back. Or no, actually no, they'll put him at wide receiver. I think. I think he'll probably get in a wide receiver. Uh, I uh, definitely he'll definitely get in as a wide receiver. And when he does get on that field, you can imagine the whole GHS, you know, supporters will be on their feet screaming and cheering. As players switch sides. Out on the receiving side, out uh, towards the left is number 15, Kevin Murphy, number 23, Kyle Glenn. Lido in the shotgun. Gets a low snap. Looks out to the side, and it's tipped Ooh. up in the air a couple of times. It is from almost intercepted there by number four, Blaze Umuhuza. Almost tipped that tip up in the air there originally by Brendan Hoffman. Dangerous pass there as as yeah. he tips it up and is able to prevent Umuhuza from getting there. As we see there, he tries to catch it one-handed. See, and just slips through the hands. That's just that's lucky for us because that would have been two interceptions in this game, and you just can't afford. I mean, it's late in the game, but still, anything can happen. You know, the main goal is you don't want them to score. Mm -hmm. 
and that error, if they made that interception, that could have caused them to maybe score. And here's Hoffman, who runs the middle. And here's a penalty marker out now. He could have, honestly, probably could have cut that with two hands. Kind of just, actually, no, I think he's had to react quick and. Yeah. But anyway, as here we have Hoffman runs out to the side. Especially with all of that defense that was on him, you get so anxious and you like you want to like not mess up. As we try to figure out what the penalty is on, it'll be against the Dutchman again. Is oh my God! There looks like what is going on here. That is, a s folks. Let's just say that, folks. The marker is at the 45-yard line. That's got to be at least 30. That's they have 30 yards to go. That's a second and at least a second and 30. As Lido sets up, the face with some pressure steps up, thrown up to the sideline. It's caught by Kyle Glenn. Beautiful nice pass. Nice catch there by Kyle Glenn as he's taken down at the two-yard line. What a beautiful pass and what a beautiful catch there by Kyle Glenn. Gets right just over this, um, the secondary of Albany. There's that big play we're looking for earlier. That is exactly right. That is the exact thing that they have been looking for all game long. And finally, in the fourth quarter, Mason Lido to Kyle Glenn has been the play that they have been trying to get, and they finally get it here in the fourth quarter. As the just a nice pass that just floats right into Kyle Glenn's hands. As he gets it over, you know, Blaze Umuhuza, and I believe to be Nizir uh, Joseph, as they set up at the two-yard line. As... Kyle Glenn motions, handed off to number 47, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Dutchman, number 47, Nick Cardinal. That's his first touchdown of the game. Great job by him. Great blocking there on the O-line. And now the Dutchman, pending on the PAT, will take a five-score lead over the Albany Falcons. As we see Kyle Glenn motion there towards the right, eventually handed off to Nick Cardinal. Their running game in this game is is unbeatable. As we have a kick, and there's a blocked kick there. Tipped away there, and we have we have a couple players on the ground there. Looks like someone's injured from Albany. Two players. We actually, it looks as though we have two players down on the ground, both for Albany. Another player's being called, you know, a couple players are calling them over as we have Art Stott there, but... Oh, that does not look good. We number on the ground is number 52, Ayub Ward. There's a trainer, Kate. I believe. All right. Or, excuse me, yeah. Um. Yep, 25, Christian Stafford, who's a sophomore for um, the Falcons. That's actually, excuse me, that'd be, that's number 52, Ayub Ward, and number 66, Um, number 66, Jihad Ali. Jihad Ali, a.k.a. Bama. One of the underclassmen on this defense. And they're, wow, that is... They're not getting up. That is not a good sight to see. No. For any team, let alone one player to be hurt, but two players to be hurt. As we take a look at the Red Sea there. The tried and true Red Sea is... Not really understanding why it's half full senior night, but you know, it is what it is, you know. Still got a lot of energy though. Tonight being, you know, really being the last home game for the season as everyone tries to show up and as both players are still on the ground. We see Albany take a knee for the teammates out of respect. It's really just a solemn moment right now for both squads. And they're still down. Oh, one player comes up slowly, kind of, with the help of uh, our coach. Uh, 66. Ooh, he's being picked up right now. He's uh, caving up on his own. That That's not good. Ali right now. Bama. Getting slowly picked up. Getting picked up by his teammates. As he's being taken off the field. That's good teamwork right there, you know. Having your teammate help you up. And he's getting carried. It's really, honestly, a sad sight to see there. It is. Hopefully, hopefully he'll be all right. I hope he'll be okay. Especially for his family, if his family's here, you know, and knowing that he can't get up and he has to be carried. 
as number 52, Ward will be is able to walk off on his own power. As we have another shot there in the Red Sea. Led by the likes of Will Carmichael, Connor Quinby, Ben Hale, and uh, Christian Clifford. Here's a Raquan. We want Raquan ch uh, chance again. Once again, though, we hope that those players that were hurt will be okay. Yeah, they, especially that one guy who couldn't get up. The, that's you know, that's just awful. You know, if, even for us to see, like, especially in a high school football game, like he's not really used to seeing that in a high school game. It's a, sh it's a shame when, like, I when you read that, you know. They've already lost Jaden Gary. They're starting safety to his torn ACL. Like that is, that's you know, I mean, that's more than just football. Like that that's is a high school football. But like that's got to be, that's a sad thing to happen. That that's just very painful, as you can imagine. As we are now ready to kick off, Cleveland up to an insurmountable lead. As Artido raises his arm, kicks it in the air, boots the shoot. As number 34 tries to catch it one-handed, but he can't do it. Scooped up by Dickens as Dickens tries to get around a couple of players and is eventually taken down at the 8-yard line. Oh, excuse me, the 13-yard line. Originally touched there by number 34, Savion Blunt. Savion LeGarrette Blunt. Missed that guy. And... Now we have another. It's a good on player. Now we have a Dutchman player. It is number five, Jason Ekwiki. Looks like he may have some cramps. Ooh. As our um. Could that be like close to like a turn ACL if you get cramps in there? As our um. position, but I don't know where it's Kate. Kate is out there to you know, help him out. As the good one players take a knee. If you're a good one and you lose one of the most star people in this game, what would you do? What'd you say? Like if you're a good one and he's injured and he can't play again and he's helped the team out a lot. What would like would that be an advantage for Albany knowing that one of their best players on the team is well, out? For I mean for them first I mean the game's kind of out of reach and second yeah. you know in football you know this team we may not be that good but we've had I you know I think we have enough depth you know although Jason Aguicki will be very much missed for his contributions if he did I mean well I mean he's not I, I mean is he up no yet? no he's not up. He's still on the ground just laying there. You know, his contributions are important to this team. But, you know, it's next guy on the bench, you know, next man up. As I honestly, I'm trying to figure out what is Kate's position. Like the the woman that is helping out Jason right now, the athletic trainer. Thank you to Mr. Maycock for the help. But, um, yeah, uh, Kate, the athletic trainer. She's really nice. You know, like, she's just very helpful, and, you know, like, she knows, like, how, like, you know, like, how to make things, you know, like, like, she gives you good advice and like, you know, how, this is how you take care of it, you know, when to ice it, when not to ice it. Mm -hmm. As Jason looking to be in a little bit of pain there. Ooh. As he winces there. The look on his face, you can tell he's in some kind of pain. Hopefully he'll be able, hopefully it won't something too bad. As... He's able to get up. He gets a hand from Kate and a fellow. He's kid getting from up. the sideline. He, with the help of that person from the sideline, the help of Kate, he's makes his way to the sideline. You hear the Red Sea cheering for him, giving him a standing ovation. Really, he's had a he's had a good game tonight. Statistically, not a lot of contributions, but overall, his impact has been 
not without need of credit. As he makes his way to the bench, coming in for him, I believe will actually be uh, Shane Thomas. A well, couple of substitutions here as the secondary second team defense will be coming in. You know, as Mincy throws it deep out to the side. Beautiful pass. Wide open there for uh, wide open catch there for Tickens, but his knee was down as he tries to run around the corner. Nice cutback route there by Dickens as he gets his first catch in about a quarter. Actually, no. He's had a good game, too. I'd say he's had a good game. Yeah, he's had a good game. Probably one of the more underrated players in the game. In this game so far. He's had about six catches. I mean, he's had probably about six catches. Yeah, about I mean. 80 yards. You can't, you know, you can't win them all. You can't catch them all. It's not like he's not caught any pass at all. Like, yeah. he's caught in some, so that's better than none. As Mincy puts up in shotgun. Snaps it, rolls out to the right immediately. Tries to get it deep, and it is incomplete. Very much overthrown, intended again for, Dix, uh, for Dickens as he is slow to get up. You got patting it back from a good one player? That's, you uh, know. Patting it back there by number 44, Hunter Griffith. Griffith. See, that's how I look about our team. Like, any sport you play, our, like, our players are so respectful. Like, if you get injured or something, like, they'll help you up sometimes. And, like, they'll, like, cheer you on and they'll support you. And if you make a mistake, you know, like, they'll sh they shake it off. And, like, they won't judge you or anything. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like, looks like, um, Griffith got a little bit away with, uh, missing, uh, messing up, uh, Dickens' footing there. But, as we move on, it is now second and ten. Wincy, uh, Mincy, excuse me, throws out to the right side. Is immediately picked off there by, by Mikey Brent as he gets out to the outside. And he's he running. Go all the he's way. got room. He's gonna go into the end zone. Touchdown, Dutchman, Mikey Brenton with the pick six, and it is now forty nothing, Gilderland. What a great play and great run there by the Dutchman by Mikey Brenton. And you can see on the sideline, Baron Hoffman jumping up and down in complete joy for. His team making that awesome touchdown right there. An awesome interception as well. As we see Mincy gets to that side. Britton with the athleticism, with the hops. As he gets around there, breaks through a couple of tackles and push with the carousel of players there as he gets around the offense. Beats out Mincy towards the end zone. What a nice play there by Britton. That's sure's, awesome. I'm sure his parents will be happy. Mm. Listen to the nose parents. He actually lives in the neighborhood. Shout out to the uh, whatever neighborhood our neighborhood is called. I'll figure that out in a minute. But um, <laughs> as we are now, actually looks like there's some confusion here. We are not. What are they calling him out? I think they actually. I think it's actually been called back. What is going on right now? From what I've seen, there's no way that, that I don't understand how. From what we're seeing right now, it turns out the touchdown has been rescinded. And now, as number 47, Cardinal will run up the middle. I just don't see how... We didn't get that touchdown. I, I, wonder, mean, I wonder how that got called back. It, it was, I mean, it, it, he wasn't down at any point. No. I mean, can't, you know, always get the right call. Yeah. Substitution for quarterback now. We have, with Mason Lito out, coming in at quarterback is number two, Mike, uh, Chris Sardito. Oh, here we go, number 23 again. Kyle Glenn cuts around the corner and gets a good run in there for about 13, 15 Ooh, yards. And there's shove. a shove there by... Ooh. There's a shove there by Nazir Joseph. As he tries to, as he pushes Kyle Glenn, there's going to be a penalty for that. Good job for not, you know, pushing back, you know, just taking it off and walking away. I 
can tack on another 15 yards to that run. As Glenn having a good game himself, even for a junior there is. Like he didn't even do, I don't understand why he got a show. Like he did nothing wrong. He got up and got a show. You know, I mean, that's, fu I mean, football, I feel like one people don't understand. I, I honestly, I don't play that football that much, but like I understand the idea that like, it's a contact sport. Yeah. And when you play, it's a high intensity sport. So like when you play that, like in the moment, like you get, you don't think, I wouldn't say you don't think as much of a sane person, but you don't think your actions as rational as you would when you're not, you know, when your adrenaline, when your adrenaline is pumping and when you're, you know, running your heart out. You know, some things like that happens, and that's, you know, it happens. Yeah, it happens, you know. And Accidents happen. <laughs> now there's some confusion here. I think maybe the pen maybe the play got called back. They're put, uh, they're now they're moving the other way. I think that might have been called on Gitterland. What? Ha I I just is it called on Gerland? Yeah, there. Yeah, there's a penalty. Be second and nine for the Dutchman. I feel like that. I'm pretty sure that play got called back, as Kyle Glenn is visibly frustrated. Now that's two calls in a row that, to me, make no sense. And the coach Penna, I guarantee you. He's a little, you know, frustrated with that call. Ardito fakes the pa fakes the handoff and runs it up the runs the field. As we are now getting towards the end of the game. As we get, yeah, I agree. As we get towards the end of the game, a lot of starting seniors are coming out. A lot of backups are coming into the game. You know, sophomore for you know. Like Kyle Glenn, who's been showing up a little bit more. Ayub Din, a senior who doesn't start that much. He's getting a little bit more playing time. He has. He comes on the field. Chris Ardito, who's actually the third string quarterback, is getting some looks as he takes a snap, steps back, throws over the middle, oh, and is easily picked off there by Dickens. As he get, tries to get around the sideline, is tackled by, oh, tackled there by Ardito. Nice play by him to... He is there at the right time, too. Yeah. That is the Dickens as whatever the saying goes, as they he intercepts it and just he was over the over outreach of Nick Papalizio. He wasn't even guarded, really, it looked like. Like, it looked like that. He wasn't really hard, like guard, guarded, really. Yeah. Doesn't quasi Dickens. Here comes a We Want Raquan uh, chance again. And fans continue to chant, We Want Raekwon. And we really, we would, we want Raekwon. We want Raekwon now. I, I think he'll come in towards more towards the end of the game. I feel like he's going to come in at the end. You know, as. Towards at the two minute, like two minute warning. Probably with a bit, about two minutes to go. I think it's not, I don't think it's going to be on this possession. I think he'll probably come in the next possession as Mincy. Gets the uh, ball and tries to run it upfield, but is taken down. There's Art Stott. Art Stott, a uh, new addition as a senior, is coming into the game for his, for the first time. Along with him, or for the offensive line, include number 44, Hunter Griffith. Number 56, Mitchell McCormick. He's still out there. Number 72, Art Stott, as he makes his first appearance out on the offensive line. And number four, Braden Steen. I talked to Braden earlier. Actually, no, not earlier. I talked to him the other day in my gym class. And I said, you know, are you pumped up for this game? And he he said he was very pumped up, and he just seemed like he was, you know, ready for it. And he's a really good, caring kid, and he seemed like he was ready. And he's like, I'm ready for anything kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. You know, which is kind of good, you know, for a good attitude. Yeah. As Mincy hands it off, and it'll be well short. Got a little bit less than six minutes of the uh, fourth quarter. You know, while we have a moment here, we, uh, the announcers, well, we would actually like to give shout-outs to some of the seniors 
on the media crew, the likes of Sarah DeJoy tonight, who's been doing graphics, Jazzy Armstrong, who's working camera, Jack Steffens, who's working camera, Chris Roy, who's working camera, Sumner Jewel, the director of the production. We have Frankie Z uh, Zekis, who's also working camera, and Sean Don Donnelly, as he usually works camera. He's not, I don't think he's on tonight, but these are the seniors. Oh, excuse me, he is on. Correction, Frankie and Sean are not seniors, but you know, we'll honor them anyway, because it's senior night, and senior night is all about honoring, so. Good for those guys, good for everybody else. As number 34, Savion Blunt tries to get around the edge, and there's a flag on the field. A couple flags out. It's a good night to be senior if you're good at one. Yeah. But, you know, uh, with me, uh, Gavin, and these other fellow crew members, we just like to, as you know, as our our last home game, probably our last football broadcast. Just want to take a moment to appreciate those who bring us, for bring me and Gavin, you know, the camera help and, you know, giving us the ability to be able to announce the game for you guys. And we just want to say thank you. This is like my first game ever announcing like anything. And I'm so, you know, grateful for being on this camera team. And I'm just, I love it. You know, I'm so proud of, you know, doing this. Announcing this game is just wonderful. Thank you all for coming out and support the team. And, you know, just thanks for coming. Coming in, substituting for number 22, Nick Papalizio, is number uh, 58, Jake Peck. As we now... Substituting in now is number 35, Carl Ciabanez. Subbing in for number two, Chris Ardito. As we take a moment right now. But, and like Beck, I said on uh, appreciation, we first had four, like, most appreciation goes out to the head of the, all of this operations is Mr. Maycock, who runs the media crew, runs the news crew that does the work, you know, does the news media in the morning and really just big thanks out for him. Yeah, thank he's, you for... He, he's the man. If I could give him a fist bump right now, I would. Yeah, thanks for, ha you know, letting me be on the camera team. You know, I enjoy it. I got more offers later on. And I just thank you for letting me be part of the camera team. As we are now set to get back here for this action. Five minutes left of the game, and Mincy uh, takes in shotgun. He rolls back, subs a little bit, and is immediately He's met sacked. with a rush at defenders as number 58, new addition to the game, Jake Peck, goes right at him. Jake Peck, his first sack and probably his second snap of the game as he gets right by the defenders there and Wince, Mincy had no, he had no time, he just had no time whatsoever. No. As Braden the Steam comes off the field now. Kicker who has come in from, I think. As we are now facing a second down and about a second down and 14. With about four minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. As Mincy waits to snap, snaps the ball, throws it off to the side. Almost caught there by Dickens. Ooh. As the crowd cheers for Quan. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a new addition to the game. Oh, wait, excuse me. No, we don't. Not yet. It's getting As there. Jack Nash is now into the game. Missed catch there. Let's go back on the play. Another missed catch there. Missed opportunity as the ball just right off the fingertips of Nazir Joseph. As fans become more and more antsy for Ray Quan Brady. The crowd behind us is going nuts. Like, 
everyone just wants for Kwame. They want him in. And I think or we're going to get him in very soon. Like to announce another uh, another substitution to the game. Uh, number 78, Sam Hobson, Jr., is on the defensive line now. As Mincy drops back. Looks right, looks left, looks left again. And it's going to be hit. He's going to be sacked. The ball is out. And that might be... It might be kind of as a forward pass there. Good pass rush there by the Gunnerland defense as they as Mincy, wherever he was looking towards. And these fan they cannot stop cheering for Raekwon. They wow, I just as nice tackle there, even by the new addition of the game, Sam Hobson on this first play. On this first snap. I think at this point, I feel like if I'm the Dutchman defense. I'm doing everything I can to turn the ball over and try to get it to Raekwon. Yeah, that's what I do. I feel like next play, this whether their next series. You no, know, he wants to get in so badly. He's never been in a football game. He's practiced, but just never been in a real game. And everyone cheering your name. I want in as quick as I could get in. Ball is snapped. Mincy steps back, looks to the right, throws it deep, and that is There's intercepted reception. there by number 47, Nick Cardinal. That's a he, flag. He gets wrapped around there. His shoulder pad comes up, but he's finally taken out at the 10-yard line. Nice pick by him. That is Albany's fifth turnover of the game tonight. And, folks, he, I, Raquan's on he the has field. arrived. Number 33, Raquan Brady has entered the game, folks. Everyone's going nuts. There's Raquan, first game of his career. Fans are on their feet. Everybody's excited to see what Raekwon Brady can do right now. As there's the Red Sea, as they're getting hyped, they get excited. As we await, I'm just can't, I can't wait to see what he, what he can do. Trying to follow Raekwon Brady's every move. As he lines up a wide receiver there on the left side. Ball is snapped. Fake pass. Handed off to number four, um, Braden Steen. Now, if I was a quarterback, I'd at least try to give him one pass. Hopefully he will. Hopefully. I think he's definitely going to get a play. It's definitely going to be whoever's quarterback. They're going to give it to him. I'm going to run. Who's, uh, who's playing? As Brady sets up on the outside, far outside, fake handoff. Hands it off again, this time out to. And the cheer, the crowd still can't stop cheering for Raquan. He's just getting all the attention tonight. Another rush for Braden Steen. As that will be a first down for the Dutchman. And with two minutes and 45 seconds left in this game, we will now see if Raquan can make anything happen. As he sets up again, I believe, again on the outside, uh, on the um, far sideline, on the close sideline, actually. Motion. Hands it off there to. There he is, right there. And he's off to number, I believe that's number 34. Who is that? Number 34. Nice run there by Shane to Thomas as, as he gets it up for another first down, another 14 yard gain. As there is Raquan Brady. As Shane to Thomas. Is. Nice carry there. The bread basket carry as he holds both arms on the uh, ball. But nice job by him. He's going to be looking really good next year. As Brady sets up on the left side. Motions. Hands the ball back off, I believe, again to Thomas. As, as he gets another good run there, just as, it's just some explosive speed as he gets about a 10-yard gain. Minute and 38 seconds left for the game, and what I want to see is one play for Raquan. Just one. Got to give him one. Got to give him a run. Gotta just give him something. The fans, you know, Timmy is helping them out, telling them where to go. As he sets up, Brady sets up on the far side. I've always wanted to say that, but uh, fake handoff, and he hands it off to Brainstein, who hands, gets it up the middle. Stiff arms, one defender, 
and is slowly taken down, taken down at the 35-yard line. A couple of nice runs here by the, some of the defenders here as we now run with just about a minute left in this game. Now what I think that's going to happen is they're going to get close to um, touchdown territory, hopefully, and they're going to give the ball to Raquan and let him make a touchdown. That's why I think, you know, nothing, no better way to end your senior night by making a touchdown for your team and winning it. As there's an end around, another handoff. This time another broken tackle. What a broken tackle there. Another spin move. And that is Carl Ciabanez, the senior, as he gets around and gets another first down for the Dutchman down at the 24-yard line. What a run here by on an end around. Cuts up the middle, cuts back out. Another nice juke there, a little bit of a push off there. God, what a just what a kid, what a kid, mm. what a good guy. <laughs> As we are now, we're down to seven seconds left. We're down to five seconds left here. They even stop the clock. That's kind of and that is it. That will do it for this. There we go. Final score: Gitterland High School thirty-four, Albany High zero. What a shut! And then, yeah, the fourth straight shutout for the Gilderland High uh, for the Gilderland Dutchman. Fourth shutout in the row to end the season on the shutout, and they end the season on a winning record as they beat Albany 34 nothing. Scores by Brendan Hoffman, highlighted by Brendan Hoff, the likes of Brendan Hoffman, you know, Brendan Hoffman, Nate Collins, Mason Lido. And at the very end of the night, probably might be the biggest highlight is Raekwon Brady making his first appearance in his final game in a varsity jersey and a uh, varsity football. I agree. As tonight we have our media crew, our production crew. My name is Jack O'Reilly, and I'm Gavin Ogren. And you have seen a production by the GHS Media Crew.